Hello, Q kids! Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody! I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas day and a Boxing Day. And now here we all are on the third day of Christmas, celebrating Jesus again together. Oh, thank you for joining me. And of course, families, I do hope uh, that parents especially will stick around for this service because, of course, this is a wonderful way for you to partner with the faith development of your children. So, as we get going into our fantastic third day of Christmas Q Kids, you guys need to get three things right? What are the three things you need to get? You need to get a Bible, a journal, and something to write or draw with. Go ahead and grab those things while uh, the rest of us will just do something to take up the time while you go find those things. Uh, but don't worry, if you, if you don't have them with you, you're not going to miss anything if you go and grab it right now. But anyway, those of us who do have their Bible journal and something to write or draw with, we are actually going to sing another Christmas song. Because it is, after all, still the third day of Christmas. Remember the 12 days of Christmas? Da, 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 da. It is the third day of Christmas, and so we're still going to say it still counts to sing Christmas songs. And so we're going to go all the way back to the Christmas song we sang right at the very beginning of the Christmas series uh, at the first Sunday of Advent called Angels We Have Heard on High. It's one of my favorite Christmas songs, and we haven't sung it in four weeks now, so I, good to refresh your memory on it. All right, so I'm going to sing it like we did uh, have in the last few weeks. We're going to sing it twice. I'm going to sing it, and then you're okay to just kind of watch and follow along the actions. And then the second time I got, I want you guys to stand up and sing it along with me, okay? Here we go. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plain, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. All right, second time around. I really would like you guys to join with me. So everybody stand up. I'm going to stay sitting because if I stand up, you're just going to see my belly. <laughs> all right, everyone stand up. Let's sing this all together. Angels we have heard on high, sweetly singing o'er the plains, and the mountains in reply, echoing their joyous strains. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria in excelsis Deo. Oh, thank you so much for singing with me. It's lovely to sing Christmas songs. So now that we continue to be in the season, in the series of Christmas, because it is, after all, still the third day of Christmas, I want us to remember the big picture question. That's right, the big picture question. I said it was going to be the last week last week, but actually we're going to bring the big picture question in one more time for one more round. And of course, our big picture question for this series is, why was Jesus born? Do you guys remember? You guys probably know it very off by heart right now, so maybe close your eyes and see if you can say it with me. Right, we're going to put it on the screen for those that haven't memorized it. We're going to say it together. Why was Jesus born? Jesus was born to rescue us from sin. That's right. The whole reason we celebrate Christmas is because Jesus rescued us from sin by first coming as a baby in a manger. It's such a wonderful story, and it's a story that we remind ourselves with our Advent wreath. <laughs> Have you guys noticed that this thing has been sitting here the entire time? That's right. Uh, during the Christmas Eve service, many of you would have made this Advent wreath uh, along with us. But even if, you did, even if you didn't do it during the uh, Christmas Eve service, we did send these little gift bags home to everybody who is kind of in our uh, circle of Q kids here. And so we hope you got them and hope you were able to create the craft, the Advent wreath craft, make your own Advent wreath. And the one thing that's different than the Advent wreath that we had last week, remember we had four candles lit at last week, which was the fourth Sunday of Advent. But this Sunday, 
or, or last Thursday when it was Christmas Eve, we light, lit the fifth candle. Now I have my Christ candle here, and you guys will all in your craft have the candle of faith. So either way, you put a fifth candle in the center to, rec to recognize that Jesus is now here. He was born, and we celebrate the fact that he is in our life with us. So, as we have already kind of listened to the Christmas story before, I want us to remind ourselves of the whole Christmas story again. And many of you would have seen on the Christmas Eve service the fun uh, Christmas story video that the youth did for us. And so actually the Q Kids video for this week is actually to watch that video all over again. So many of you, you would have already seen it before, but it's a really fun video. So I hope that you enjoy watching it again because the great thing about this video, it tells us the entire story of Jesus' birth. And so afterwards, we're going to read a Bible story and then we're going to talk about what Christmas means to us. So anyway, let's watch the story again. The youth did such a hard, good work uh, t telling us the Christmas story. I think it's worth watching again. Welcome to the very merry, socially distanced, COVID-friendly Christmas story presented by Queensway Baptist Church. 2,000 years ago, in a town called Nazareth in Galilee, there was a girl named Mary who was engaged to a man named Joseph. One day, God sent the angel Gabriel to Mary. The angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. The Holy Spirit will make you pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You must name him Jesus. He will be great and will be the son of God. He will rule the earth like a king. His kingdom will never end. I serve the Lord, Mary answered. May it happen to me just as you said it would. Mary became pregnant, but she was not yet married to Joseph. This made Joseph very worried, and he thought that he might not marry her because of this. But one night, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. The angel said, Joseph, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. The baby inside her is from the Holy Spirit. She is going to have a son. You must give him the name Jesus. He will save his people from their sins. Joseph woke up and did what the angel of the Lord told him to do. He took Mary home as his wife. Near the end of Mary's pregnancy, she and Joseph had to travel to Bethlehem from their hometown of Nazareth for the Roman census. While Joseph and Mary were there, she gave birth to her baby. It was a boy, just like the angel Gabriel said. She wrapped him in cloth and placed him in a manger since there was no room for them in the inn. Meanwhile, there were shepherds living out in fields nearby. They were looking after their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that is for all people. Today, in Bethlehem, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. You will find him wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a large group of angels from heaven also appeared, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. The angels left, and the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus, after the shepherds had seen him, they told everyone what the angel had said about this child. After Jesus was born, wise men from the east came to see Jesus. They were led by a star in the sky that had finally stopped over the place where Jesus was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were filled with joy. The wise men went to the house and saw Jesus. 
with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. They gave him presents of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thank you for watching, and Merry Christmas! <laughs> That's such a great Christmas story. Thank you very much to the youth. I know some of your older siblings might have been part of it. It's a great way for us to learn the Christmas story. So now we're going to read the Christmas story again in our Bibles. And actually, we're going to go all the way back to a Bible story we read a couple of weeks ago, which is uh, the Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20 passage. We've already read it again this se read before this season, but it's good to remind us. So I invite you to, during this time, go to Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 20, so that we can read the Christmas story again. Now, of course, if you would like to read something out of the Jesus Storybook Bible, I invite you to go back to page 176, which is the He's Here story. Again, we've read it before, but it's worth reading again because it's a very important story. So let's take some time reading the He's Here story at page 176 or Luke 1, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 to 20, and we'll come back afterwards.
All right, now that we've read that story and we've watched the Christmas story, I want to talk about not the main point of the story. We usually have like a main point that sits right up here in the corner, right? We don't have a main point this, this week. I, what I want to do is share with you what that Christmas story means to me. And, and that's going to actually uh, relate to what we're going to do in our journal time a little later. So what does, what does this Christmas story mean to me? Well, see, the Christmas story, it, it, it's kind of like a gift. We all received these gifts before, and you guys might have opened your presents on Christmas morning and got some really lovely presents that looked like this or maybe even looked better than this. And you know that excitement we get when we see presents under a tree? And we think, yes, we get to get some amazing stuff. Have you ever had an uh, ex experience where you opened up the Christmas present and you looked inside, oh, and it wasn't what you wanted? You guys have maybe had that experience before where you get something that's, oh, it's not what you wanted. But sometimes, and I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but sometimes at first you don't want it. So at first you see the gift and it's a free gift. You're like, oh, this is a wonderful thing. You look at it first and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want it. But sometimes, even though you might not have initially thought you wanted it, eventually it becomes something very special to you. Now, I don't know if you have something like that because um, you know, maybe, maybe you just don't have a lot of experience with that kind of thing, but you know, Jesus was kind of like that way to the world. You know, when some people came and met Jesus, they didn't recognize the true value of the gift he was. Like, he was just a baby at first, right? And of course, the shepherds and the wise men knew what he meant at first, but some other people didn't quite know, well, this is just a baby. How is this such an important thing? But of course, the world eventually became to realize that this baby would grow up into a man and that man would not only do some amazing things in the world, but then he would die on the cross and rise again so that we might have eternal life with him. So Jesus is kind of like a present, like the best present in the entire world. And sometimes we might not recognize it at the time, but when we really think about it, we think that all that Jesus has given to us, we realize that Jesus is like a better present that we could ever get. Like, what might have you got this year? Did you get some dolls? Did you get some toys? The fact that we have eternal life with him and that we have love from him forever, I mean, that's so much better than everything. And that's what Christmas means to me. Anyway, let's repeat our memory verse because I think our memory verse can be a very good way for us to remember what this whole thing is about. So uh, let us put it up on the screen and we're going to say it together. But when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law, that we might receive adoption to sonship. Galatians 4, 4 to 5. That's right. Jesus came so it might be adopted to in his family and be surrounded by his love forever. So let's take that all and go into our journal and have some quiet journal time. So now, if you happen to join us for the very first time, first of all, welcome. Welcome during Christmas. Uh, actually, this is a time where we spend some quiet time before we read our Bibles with our families. But this time, it's just us and Jesus with our journals. We're going to write and draw something because Jesus can speak to us and we can speak to him through writing and drawing. So, if you would, so no matter whether you're going to write or draw something, I want you to write or draw the same thing. Uh, draw or write about what is your favorite part about Christmas. And even as you're drawing your favorite part, it might be your Christmas tree, it might be presents, it might be the story of Jesus, and or as you're writing about the various things that are the best part about Christmas for you, I want you to remember and say to Jesus in your mind, Jesus, thank you for giving me this wonderful gift, this thing that I love about Christmas, and in your mind, thank him for being the best Christmas gift of all. So we're going to take some time in our journal for that. A few minutes, again, just quiet us alone, not talking to our brothers and sisters. And then we're going to come back afterwards.
Okay, well, I hope you all had a wonderful time writing or drawing in your journals, and we're all going to come together now and pray. So would you pray with me? Let's fold our hands, close our eyes, and say these words in your mind with me. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for the season of Christmas that reminds us that you rescued us from sin and that you let us live forever by just believing in you. Help us to remember this during Christmas. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, it is now time for circle time. I hope to see you all in circle time on the Zoom. Uh, we will see you very, very soon. Parents, it's the same link as always, so go ahead and click that same link. And uh, if you happen to be joining with us for the first time and don't have the link to Q Kids or to Circle Time, uh, please do go to queensway.org slash QKids, and there is going to be a form which you can fill out which will let us know that you would like to connect with us, and we can hopefully see you for future Circle Times. So anyway, Merry Christmas, have a blessed week, and we'll see you all very soon for Circle Time. Bye!